Reasons for creating Reasons for creating scorpions Why did God choose the Arab Peninsula to reveal Quran? The problem of evil One may wonder, as God has subjugated the world and many creations to mankind, as he ordered angels to prostrate to man, why then such harmful creatures, scorpions, have been created? Some do not know why bad arthropods, such harmful creatures, were created? Here you will find out why. Do we live in paradise? Those who are wondering about this reasons for the creation of bad arthropods, such harmful creatures, do not get the nature of our world. They think this life should be a paradise living of a life. But bad people do not deserve to reside in paradise. This worldly life is not heaven living. If this world is a heaven, it would seem as if God gave all people the same treatment, that Allah has let the good and pious ones be rewarded the same as the wicked and sinful ones. That's not fair. Allah is the just so, this is impossible. The logic of evil. God says that paradise is in the hereafter and only those who deserve it will enter it. Paradise has been created for those who deserve it and in fact, not all people do deserve it. One should ask himself whether he deserves paradise or not. If all people were good and worthy of living in a paradise, God would have let us live in it already. First, people must go through a process of sorting out, trials and testing, or in other words, scrutinizing, so that the believing good doers be distinguished from the disbelieving evil doers. The wicked and evil would not ever enjoy the bliss of heavens. God SWT has created this world for this purpose, a trial. Life is a test for people's patience in facing afflictions and calamities. So, no one has the right to object to any kind of harm or calamity or reject such things. It's a part of this worldly life. No one is exempted from affliction and tribulations even messengers and prophets. Actually, the last messenger from God to humanity Muhammad peace and blessing of Allah be upon him told us that messengers and prophets are the most severely tested than those who are most pious and then the less pious and so on. So, no one is exempted from these afflictions, as it is, the scrutinizing, that all are subjected to. Another perspective for the problem of evil. In this life, we face very hot and cold weather, diseases, senility, microbes, evil, volcanoes, earthquakes and so much evil, but God's mercy prevails and is evident. God's mercy is evident as far as weather is concerned. Extremes of weather are the exceptions so hurricanes, tornadoes, torrents and volcanoes are just accidental cases and God intervenes with his mercy, but his decrees always take place. Health is the rule and illness is the exception. Allah intervenes with his mercy and has made every evil limited and has something good in it. In other words, infections may strengthen the immunity of people. We see volcanoes discharge quantities of liquid metals, and earthquakes release the inner core pressure of the earth, which maintains its balance. Cold and hot weather act as a sauna stimulating body circulation. So, every evil includes something good in it and this is evidence of divine mercy. Nothing happens without God's will and permission. God's mercy is evident when people face all sorts of evils such as plights, calamities and diseases etc. This enhances endurance, knowledge, self-growth, betterment and wisdom. Allah equipped man with a mind, the ability to learn and develop, skills and knowledge to take control. Man has truly benefited from evil. He fights diseases with medicine and learns to protect himself from weather harm, wild animals, natural phenomena etc. Evil is imperative. There is another side to show Allah's mercy. He shows us the importance of evil's existence, as evil and freedom go hand in hand. God has granted man freedom of choice, which means that man has the right to um and to um is to do evil and to sin. So, this evil doing is a side product of the freedom granted to mankind by God. God could have created us as angels, who do as told, do not um and would be obliged and compelled by their nature to do good. That would have made our deeds unintentional, contradicting the purpose that mankind was created for. Man should willingly resort to God and choose to act righteously. On the other hand, man may um and commit sins as a result of his freedom of choice. Such errors are evil doings. Evil doing is the price of our freedom of choice. It is God's mercy prevailing in making this troublesome life a temporary abode for man and limited this toiling. Allah says in Quran, We have certainly created man into hardship. Quran 90 colon 4, I verse, 90 colon 4, of Quran, English interpretation of meaning. And Allah takes an oath on the father of humanity, also taking an oath on the offspring reproduced from him. Verily, I have created the human in tiredness and difficulty, because of the severities he experiences in the world. Does the human think that when he sins, no one is in a position to be able to do anything to him, nor take retribution from him, even if it is his Lord who created him? 
Al Ballad 3 5. This world is just a path to reach our destination, the hereafter. It is not our final abode. Scorpions are not pure evil. Pure evil is pointless and purposeless. Scorpions are not pure evil because you may see a good in them as developing certain useful substances such as antivenoms and medications for hypertension and other illnesses. Well, many have a more harmful effect than scorpions. A scorpion may sting one person and this person may not be killed at all but a drug dealer destroys millions of youth and ruin entire communities. So, public execution is not an enough punishment for this kind of people. They should be dealt with according to their bad deeds as they are more dangerous than scorpions, tornadoes, tuberculosis, cholera, snakes, earthquakes, volcanoes etc. We sometimes can see evil's good outcome. On taking a closer look at man, you will find that everyone has thousands even millions of microbes inside his body. Microbes and parasites exist in and on human bodies, even on hair, some are useful and others are harmful. Scientists have been able to use E. coli bacteria of the gut in synthesizing the best type of insulin, yet they are only microbes. Scientists also made a medicine for rheumatism from bee venom. An antibiotic was prepared from a special ant gland. It is able to kill many microbes, bacteria, and fungi. Another example is wastewater. There is nothing as filthy as drainage water which is full of microbes. When such microbes are put inside huge containers along with wastes and other filthy materials, gas evolves by the virtue of the chemical and biological activities of such microbes. This gas is called biogas that is used as a fuel and in generating electricity. Even wastewater and sludge are useful to man. The microbes of smallpox, typhoid, tuberculosis, cholera, and poliomyelitis are used to prepare vaccines to protect man against these diseases. Diphtheria vaccines, for instance, are prepared from the microbes of diphtheria by attenuating them. So these vaccines protect man. Man learned to save his own life utilizing deadly things with God's mercy and grace by using the blessing of intellect that was bestowed upon him. Conclusion To conclude, when you think thoroughly about the world that is full of evil, you find a kind of strange harmonious balanced existence. This is the meaning of the old proverb that goes, what really exists cannot be bettered. Allah who has created this world is the all-wise, the all-knowing. If you see a blemish, try to reconsider the matter, for this seemingly evil thing may be a blessing in disguise. The curve in the bow allows the throwing of the arrow. Why did God choose the Arab Peninsula to reveal Quran? Why did God choose the Arab Peninsula to reveal Quran, the last message of God sent to all mankind through Gabriel, peace be upon him, to Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. Situation around Arab Peninsula at that time at that time there were two main powers and over-controlling luxurious countries namely the Romans and Persians. They were famous for their philosophical thinking, luxury, and war powers, beside Greece and India that were famous for philosophical and legendary heritage, etc. As for Persia, in the mid of the 5th century A.D., they had contradicting and illusionary corrupt ideas of philosophical and religious nature. That led to incredible corruption and ethical deviations such as Zoroastrian religion which was mainly embraced by men in authority. It recommended and preferred, for example, marriage to the mother, daughter, or sister. Another philosophy instructed was to allow sharing women, and to give the right to authorities to take people's money believing it is the same as they share fire, water, and air. Book, Jurisprudence of Prophetic Biography, by Imam Muhammad al beauty as translated. Concerning the Romans, they were more concerned with colonial wars and ambitions. They were evolving and changing Christianity so as to suit their extreme desires and interests. While Greece and India were overwhelmed with belief in the wordy inherited legends that took them to no progress or useful result. While the Indians, as agreed by all historians, agreed that they led to to more moral and ethical deterioration. With their neighbors starting from this age of the 16th century A.D. D., the previously mentioned reference. Reasons for choosing Arab Peninsula About the Arab Peninsula, it was quiet and far and even isolated from all these illusions, disturbance and false beliefs. No ethical deviations or philosophy. Firstly and most importantly, it had none of these ethical deviations or immorality. In addition, it had not adopted, started or even known any sort of philosophy either as immoral as the Persians or the Romans, nor any sort of philosophy whatsoever. They also had no colonial avidities or interests like the Romans. Moreover, they did not adopt any extreme philosophical or argumentative methodology or approaches like the Greek that would let them be finally a prey to legends and illusions. The previously mentioned. Reference. Nature of people in Arab Peninsula 
secondly, their nature was mainly innate and pure. It did not fuse into any changed forms. You could find the innate human and humane nature in them very apparent, and great in traditions strongly as in loyalty, helping the others, generosity, independence and chastity. The previously mentioned reference. However, they had sort of ignorance of how to follow these great values correctly. So for example, Arab would kill their children for the sake of chastity. They could waste all money for the sake of generosity and hospitality. And God later described it in Quran. And remember him, as he has guided you, for indeed, you were before that among those astray. Quran 2, 198, verse, 2 198, of Quran, English interpretation of meaning. There is no sin in seeking lawful provision by trading or other ways during the Hajj. When you leave Arafat after having spent the day there on the 9th of Dhu al Hijjah, and when you head towards Musdalifa on the night before the 10th of Dhu al Hijjah, remember Allah by glorifying and praising Him and by praying to Him at the sacred place in Musdalifa. Remember that Allah has guided you to the teachings of His path and the acts of Hajj to His house. You were unaware of the sacred laws before this. Then leave Arafat just as the Prophet Abraham used to do, and do not leave out stopping at Arafat as the people of ignorance used to do. Seek forgiveness from Allah for any defects in the performance of the Hajj, for Allah is forgiving towards those of his servants who repent and he is merciful towards them. Al-Baqarah 198-199 Thirdly, as for the geographical position, the Arab Peninsula lies in the mid of the world. In fact, they were honored by having the sacred house of God, except that they put idols to be worshipped in addition to God. This is because they forgot the message and guidance sent by Prophet Abraham calling for believing in one God with no partner or mediator. Relation between illiteracy and revelation. Fourthly, they were illiterate which made them by no doubt not able to read other cultures or even be, as falsely claimed, any sort of writers of Quran. The Book of God and Last Revelation through Gabriel, the Angel, to Prophet Muhammad, PBUH. Let alone the fact that they were incapable to imitate Quran which they strongly opposed. To prove this, it would have been a tribal pride to allege the revelation. However, even the opposition to Prophet Muhammad came from his own people and tribe, beside other tribes in the Arab Peninsula. Also, none can claim it as a natural philosophical or mental development or phenomena. Since they were extremely isolated from all surroundings and they were also illiterate and only innate honoring the inherited great values and traditions as previously mentioned. However, Prophet Muhammad, PBUH, later on when the message settled sent messengers to all the world with the word of Islam and last revelation Quran, like the Romans and the Persians, etc. which is internationally proved by history. Conclusion So, in a word Islam was revealed in the Arab Peninsula for all the valuable characteristics previously mentioned, that kept it pure, innate and more ready for the revelation as compared to all other corrupted surroundings let alone the good values they kept and their geographical position that helped it be the cradle and center to reach all the world around.